Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and I am here today with lesson number 19 about how to develop that great and rewarding and satisfying and wonderful engineering career. It's lesson number 19 and what we are going to talk about today is how to properly bring problems to your management. All right. If you haven't watched the other earlier lessons, you need to make sure that you go back and watch those because I've talked in a lot of lessons about the importance of not being viewed as a complainer. The importance of not complaining about anything your first year, really being viewed as a person who doesn't have a critical spirit. Because that's one of the things engineers, one of the failures of engineers is they always see a better way of doing things, which means they always see the present way as being bad, which means they get into this habit of having a critical spirit. And a critical spirit is something that will just wreck your career as an engineer. Engineer. And so what I've really tried to emphasize over and over and over is don't be a complainer. But let's say on rare occasions there is something that really is an issue and really needs to be brought to your boss. I'm going to talk to you today about how to do that. Okay. Number one thing before you run down, complain to your boss, before you run down, and tell your boss a problem in the organization, you need to stop and pause and reflect and ask yourself, is this really something that needs to be taken to the boss? Okay, is this a real issue? You've got to pick your battles carefully. You've got to just always not run down there every time something doesn't suit you. A lot of times it's just your opinion. Don't run down there and complain all the time. So before you do it, is this really something that you need to go take to your boss? One thing is you've got to, you've got to ask yourself, is this really an issue with the effectiveness of the organization? Or is this something that's just related to my own personal insecurity? The fact that we're doing things a new and different way, I'm insecure about it. And so when I'm running down and complaining about the new thing that's being introduced when really, in fact, it's just that I'm insecure. Okay, is it something related to my social awkwardness, right? That, that there's going to be some new expectations and, and I'm very insecure because I'm going to be socially awkward and I'm not sure that I can do this thing. Is, is it really an issue with the organization or is it something that just personally is threatening me? Okay, is it something maybe that's really an issue or is it something associated with my pride or ego? Okay, remember four big problems engineers have. They're insecure, they're socially awkward, they're easily threatened, and they have pride and ego problems. So always reflect, always be honest with yourself. Before you run into your manager's office, make sure that you have reflected and that this issue is a legitimate issue associated with the success or efficiency of the organization and not something that's just your opinion or your comfort zone or your little hang-ups or your, your little insecurity. So be honest with yourself because you do not want to be viewed as a complainer. If you are a complainer, it is going to wreck your career. And a, what's the good news? A lot of people are wrecking their career because they're complainers. What's that? That is an opportunity for you to shine. You be the shining example of someone who is not a complainer. But that doesn't mean that there's not sometimes that you need to go and you need to bring an issue to your management. But like, let me give you, let, <clears throat> let me give you an example, okay? And then you can look at this example and maybe you can learn from it. <clears throat> Let's say a person is just really frustrated with their job. They're, they're, they're responsible for running a uh, piece of test equipment in the test lab. They're testing integrated circuits as they come out and they're just totally frustrated and they're frustrated because they're never getting enough done. They're always inefficient. There's things getting broken. It's just all these things are going wrong and they finally just had it that, you know, this is a crazy thing. So they just go into their boss and just say, man, this is just not working in there that I spend all of my time. Everybody is always mad at me. Everyone's always yelling at me and I'm always having to change the probe card, change the probe card. The probe cards are breaking and then when the probe card breaks and when I test this thing it doesn't work and then everybody's yelling at me nothing's getting done nobody's happy you know what that sounds like 
That sounds like a whole lot of complaining. That sounds like you can't manage your workspace. It sounds like that that you're, you know, you got a lot of unhappy customers and not only are you looking bad, but you're making the organization look bad. Okay. You look bad when you come in there and say something like that to me. Okay. Also, what you have to understand, I might be under a lot of pressure myself. You know what I might be seeing? I might be seeing, man, if we don't get this problem resolved and get these deliveries made and get that contract extension, I'm going to have to get rid of half the organization. So I'm sitting here trying to think, oh man, we've got problems. If we don't get things under control, I'm going to have to get rid of half the oper uh, operation. And what do you do? You come in and start complaining. <laughs> like to some extent, you just made my decision easier. Like I'll start by just getting rid of the getting rid of the complainers, okay? But you see, I'm already under pressure. I already have enough stuff I'm worried about, and now you come and lay this big problem on me. And the way that you're describing it, it just sounds hopeless. Like man, I have no idea how to fix this. It's like things are falling apart in the test lab. I don't have time to go deal with that. You sound like what? You sound like a complainer. You sound like what? You sound like part of the problem. You sound like what? Maybe you're the cause of the problem. Okay, let me take that same situation and let me present it to you differently. You know, first of all, don't bring something to the manager unless you've gone through the checklist. It's a real issue. It's not one of these social quirk things, one of these insecurity things. It's a real issue you need to take to your manager. How do you take it to them? You take it to them concisely. You state the problem concisely. You state it in a non-emotional way. You present it very concisely, but very quickly with facts and data. Okay, concise with facts and data. Just like the guy used to say, just the facts, ma'am. Okay, concisely with the facts and the data. And then you know what? You never bring him a problem without bringing him a proposed solution. Okay, so you come in and say, things are getting bottleneck. I work in the test lab. I'm responsible for one of the test systems. We got a bottleneck in the test lab and it's starting to impact the organization. What I observe is this, that we are operating on a first in, first out basis, and we've got four pieces of test equipment, we've got four test systems, and everything just comes into the next available slot. And we've got different types of things that are testing, that we're testing, and what I'm finding is, I'm finding that I'm spending half of the day retooling, because I've got to retool that test equipment for whatever comes in next, because we do things first in, first out. And so are the other people. What I'm also finding is, is that when I have to swap out the probe cards, that's when they get broken. Okay, because as careful as I am, when I take them out and I put them back in, they're getting broken. And what I see is, is that we're spending about $10,000 a month on probe cards. And we're backlogging in testing. And as we're backlogging in testing, people are feeling under more pressure, more mistakes are being made. Okay, so what I would like to suggest is, I would like to suggest the following, even though it sounds like it's not efficient, just hear me out. We have the four test systems. We leave one set up just to test memory. We leave one set up just to test microprocessors. We leave one set up just to test glue chips. And then the fourth one is our sort of hot tester that, okay, that one, whatever the emergency is, we'll put on that. If we have to change the probe card out, whatever. Whatever the customer is urgent, that's the crisis, we'll do that on that hot machine. But the other three will be left configured. And it might be that part of the day, this one might end up for a little part of the day vacant, or it might end up this one gets a little backlog. But if we do this, I, you know, I really believe that the throughput will be much smoother. We will overall be getting a lot more testing done. We'll be clearing the backlog. We'll still be able to respond to the crisis with this one machine. And I estimate that we're going to reduce by a factor of five the money that we're spending on probe cards. Okay. What does that sound like? Does that sound like a complainer or does that sound like a problem solver? Do you see what this guy, the manager, he's under all types of pressure and he's worried about all these things? What did you just bring him? 
You just brought him a solution. Do you realize as he was looking at this stuff and thinking he's got to get rid of people, it's just like part of the problem is all the money. It's like, man, we're spending so much money on probe cards. You know, I don't know how we're going to, you know what you just did? You brought him a solution as opposed to a problem. But do you see the, the, the situation for those two cases was exactly the same, but it was just the strategy that you used to present it to your boss. Okay, in the one case, it was all about me and how frustrated I am and how me, 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 complain, 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 complain. But in the other case, you're bringing a solution. Yes, you needed to describe what the situation was, but it was in non-emotional terms. It was in concise, fact-based, database form. And then immediately after that, you present him with a solution. Okay, so what's the key here? Never bring personal issues. Before you go complain to your boss, make sure that it's not personal. It's not due to insecurity or, or pride or you feeling threatened. It's really genuinely due to optimization of the organization. And then when you present it to your boss, present it concisely and fact-based, not emotional, and then never do that without having a solution. And you know what? Likely, he's going to tell you, yeah go do it. And then you know what? You're going to be viewed as a problem solver, not as a complainer. And you know who gets promoted? Problem solvers. You know who gets big raises? Problem solvers. You know who get big bonuses? Problem solvers. You know who gets none of that? Complainers. You're going to be a problem solver. And it's just about thinking about how you present things to your boss. Nine times out of ten, you probably shouldn't go to him at all, but when it really is something that you need to do to take to him, take it to him the right way. Does this make sense? Leave comments below. I'd really love to hear from you. If you like this, think about giving us a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to the channel. Maybe sharing this on your social media. This is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com, and I will talk to you guys later.